Welcome everyone. I'm so happy to be sharing another tarot card inspired doll with you all today. This time, the card I've chosen is the moon. This is part of a big series I've done where each doll I make is inspired by one of the cards from the major arcana of the tarot. So make sure you check out my other dolls in the series if you haven't already. As a base for this creation, I decided to go with a gingerbread house from the Ever After High line. I originally was going to go with a Claudine from Monster High because I knew I wanted a darker skin tone, but I thought the sweet round faces of the Ever After dolls would suit this character better. I was quite surprised to see how similar in skin tone these two dolls are. I think it's something about Ginger's pink hair that makes her skin look paler than it actually is. Or maybe that's just me. I prepare the doll as always by removing her clothes and cutting off her hair as short as I can. I then use boiling hot water to soften the vinyl of her head so I can easily remove it, before using a screwdriver to scrape out what's left of her hair. I cut a small incision in the back of her head to get all the gunk out. I use 100% pure acetone to remove her factory paint and oh my gosh that is not what I thought her eye mold would look like. I keep removing her paint, but on the inside I'm freaking out because her eye mold is so large, so feline in shape, and so defined in a way that I know is going to be hard to cover up. I know I'm going to have to be very careful and clever while I draw her new eyes to try and disguise this as much as I possibly can. For the design of this doll, I took so, so much inspiration from the designs of the Water Tribe people from Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm a big fan of the show, and so when I was thinking of a moon-inspired character, of course my first thought is of Yue. I didn't want to just make a doll of her for the series because the whole idea of the tarot dolls for me is to create completely original character designs but I could still take lots of inspiration. In the show's design, the Water Tribe is based off the real-life Arctic cultures such as the Inuit and the Yupik. This was the reason I really wanted a deeper skin tone doll. And you'll also see I give this character a tapered eyelid with a prominent epicanthal fold, which is an eye shape commonly seen in these cultures as well as many Asian cultures. Blue eyes are not so common however, but I think to reflect the colour of the night sky and the greyish blue colour of the moon, it's the right choice to make. You can see here me drawing in her tapered eyelid. Ideally, I would not have added this extra crease on the outside of each eye, as it's not a typical occurrence with this eye shape. However, I needed to add some more details into this part of the face to help disguise the prominent sculpting of the factory eye.
In the tarot, the moon is a card of illusion and deception, and therefore often suggests a time when something is not as it appears to be. Perhaps a misunderstanding, or a truth you cannot admit to yourself. This is an excerpt from the American Tarot Association. In the moonlight, things that are benevolent during the day can suddenly seem dangerous and malicious. The very term moonlight is misleading because the moon does not emit light of its own. It simply reflects the light of the sun. Some people even claim to see the face of a man on the moon's cratered surface. Though of course such a thing is impossible, and only an illusion. A lot of people who look for that face in the moon know it could not be there, but they look nonetheless. This card is one of the few major arcana with important animal symbolism, and with no human figures in the majority of designs. The Raider White card shows a wolf and a dog, two members of the same genus, but the first is wild and the second has been domesticated. Both of them are shown howling at the moon, and if a human were present in this scene, he would probably be affected somehow as well. Regardless of your place in the hierarchy of society or evolution, you are still susceptible to illusions and deception. The moon shines the same light down on everyone, though what you see when that light reaches your eyes depends on who you are, not on what you see. I plan on giving this girl a very short hairstyle, so to help blend it and make it look more natural, I draw in some soft curling baby hairs. I thought this footage was really interesting because it so clearly shows the difference between different brands of watercolour pencil. The first time I go in to draw the hairs, I am using my black Caran d'Ache pencil, which is my favourite brand for delicate and precise work and for when I want to build up colour gradients over many layers with MSC. You can then see me go over these lines with my Derwent Inktense black pencil, which is clearly much more pigmented, but it's harder to create fine and delicate lines. I just wanted to share this with you all in case anyone was wondering which brand I used or which brand I preferred. I definitely love having a mix of pencils to choose from. After applying some highlight, I use paint for that extra sharp detail, and her face up is done for now. I paint her scalp black to prepare it for her hairstyle. I'm going to be flocking her head to get the look of a very short buzz cut style. 
I take my black acrylic yarn and start cutting it up into small pieces. In the past, when I have made flocking for other projects, I really try to cut the smallest flocking possible. But I want this hairstyle to have lots of texture and to have a messy tomboyish charm. So I cut my flocking a little bit longer, about two or three millimeters. Then I cover her head in PVA glue and press the flocking in, leaving it overnight to dry. Once it's dry, I can brush away all the excess flock until just the glued down layer remains. To create a fuller appearance, I do a second layer of flocking, but this time I used a watered down PVA glue to ensure I don't mess up the first layer when I apply it. I wanted this girl to wear a wolf pelt as part of her outfit, and I found this lovely 3D file of a wolf on the website Colts 3D. So all I have to do is remove most of his body and sort out the edges. With it printed, I can use chalk pastels and acrylic paint to bring him to life. For my interpretation of the moon card, I wanted to play off this idea of the dog and the wolf. I love the idea of creating this very cute young little girl to represent the domestic side but at night she dons this wolf coat and roams the streets getting up to all kinds of mischief. I think we all, in our own ways, have a kind of disguise we can wear to summon a special power, something we couldn't do if we weren't wearing that disguise. I use a faux fur to create the rest of the coat, adding in darts to create a shape that follows the Ever After High doll bodies. When you cut out faux fur, it's a good idea to always keep the blades of the scissors as close to the base of the fabric as possible. This way, you're minimizing the amount of fur that gets cut, which in turn minimizes the mess that you make. To make this coat as regal and dramatic as possible, I decide to give it a red satin lining. So I cut out the same pattern, but this time in red satin. I sew up the same darts and then glue the two pieces together for the finished coat. Once the pieces are assembled, I can glue the hood of the coat onto the 3D printed wolf head. I have this blue tassel with a small red accent which will work perfectly for the colour story I have in mind. I loop a large jump ring onto it. I bend a jump ring into an S shape and glue it to the arm of the wolf pelt and repeat this on the other side. With these hooks in place, I can use the tassel as a closure for the garment.
off camera, I construct the rest of her outfit using different shades of blue satin to create a pair of pants and a shirt. I give this shirt short sleeves as I was worried that the white and blue color story would read more snow than moon and this lighter outfit might move away from that idea a bit more. To create the best fit possible, I decide to sew her into her pants using a ladder stitch. In my stash I found this pair of shoes. I believe they're from the Monster High line, but I'm not sure exactly which character. I use different shades of black and brown pan pastels to create highlights and shadows on the boots, as well as trying to create the look of worn leather. I wanted to add a sharper shadow underneath the laces, so I trade my pastels in for a watercolour pencil. I also use a light brown pencil to add some highlights. To finish, I paint some details with a gunmetal silver. And with that, she's all done. I hope you enjoyed my interpretation of this tarot card. To me, she's very sweet, but has a poignant depth to her character. Without further ado, I present the moon. I hope you love her. Thank you so much for watching, your support means so much to me. Make sure to like the video if you like it, and leave a comment below, I read every single comment. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content, and I'll see you next time. Have an awesome day.